Welcome to the BFF Report. I'm your host, Mike B, aka Phony, and today we're gonna be taking a look at Team Fortress 2 because it just went free to play. And now that everybody's pretty much cleared all of the 4.2 content, you guys don't have anything to do till next week because that's when RBG start up again, baby. Woohoo! Anyways, let's get started. One thing you guys probably don't know me for is my first person shooter background. That would probably explain my affinity for action based games over story time RPGs. You see, back in the day, there were two paths. Path one, which is the route that I took, went kind of like this. Wolfenstein 3D, then Doom came along, then of course Doom 2, and then I was stuck in this phase where my mom bought a Mac, and because it was apparently it was good for school, you couldn't do school stuff on a PC, oh no. And I spent pretty much 15 lifetimes worth in Marathon. Uh, Rise of the Triad, Duke Nukem 3D, Unreal Tournament, Quake 3, GoldenEye, Halo, that was my console phase, right? And then I went right back to PC with Unreal Tournament 2003 and 2004, even though 2004 was, eh, whatever. Then someone told me that there was Cap to the Flag and WoW. And my reign as a self-proclaimed connoisseur of first-person shooters ended. And the life-sucking endless cycle of MMORPGs began. Oh, all right, uh, the, the second path, uh, Half-Life and Counter-Strike. I've had opportunities over the past couple years to dabble in a few FPSs from time to time, but it was never really enough to sink good money into it. Not that there weren't any quality games out there, because I did throw down money for like the Halo releases, Portal 1 and 2, uh, of course Mass Effect 1 and 2, but those games weren't exactly what I would personally call like a straight shooter compared to games like Team Fortress 2, which in the past used to cost many, many dollar bills. Now it is free which just opens the floodgates to everybody who is clearly terrible at games and broke together at the same time. It's a terrible combination, let me tell you. To come into the arena with everybody who paid hard-earned money on this game and got really good at it and just ruined their day. Now that I have this outsider's perspective to a game that's pretty well established and coming at it from being fully immersed in the MMO industry, I'm gonna go ahead and take a second just to point out a couple things that I noticed. <clears throat> First, we can go ahead and get the expected stuff out of the way. When you initially enter the game, it urges you to go through the tutorial, which essentially teaches you the basic fundamentals of the four very different classes that they have here. If you've logged any amount of time in any first person shooter ever, a lot of this will be common sense. Melee for melee range, uh, shotties and flak weapons for mid, or close if you're in the mood to gib, uh, and then your long range weapons, which if your class is non-support, range from rifles to nades to scoped weapons. Regardless though, it might be a good idea just to knock these out, go through them for uh, familiarization, at, at least, and of course, for achievements. Now on to the more familiar parts. Team Fortress 2 has nine classes. Scout, Soldier, Pyro, Demo, Heavy, Engineer, Medic, Sniper, and Spy. These classes are divided up into three categories. It's like uh, offense, defense, and like support or something. Despite being loosely bound to roles, they each have very unique class mechanics. Not at all like anything us MMO players have seen before, right guys? For the sake of time, I'm only gonna pick a few classes and specifically demonstrate, uh, albeit probably terribly, uh, how some of their mechanics function in a live setting. Two birds, one stone. This is me playing a medic supporting a steam buddy of mine and seven who is playing a heavy. Now a better way to do this probably would have been to maybe run around him a little bit or stand kind of inside of him so that he at least he knows that uh, you're not back there dying. Now he's smart enough to turn around and check so I don't really have to worry about that. Uh, here again, he's taking care of dudes and I am just basically LOSing the target because you always take out the healer first. That's common in any game, any MMO, any, anywhere. You always focus on the healer. Um, so of course, I'm going to LOS as much as I can. Now in the lower right corner, you see that I am building up something up to 100%. This is an ability that I have by right clicking that will actually enable an invulnerability for like four seconds or so. Right now we are completely surrounded by guys. I activate it. N7 goes about his business mowing down everybody in the vicinity and we pretty much look like badasses. If you're a medic, stick to a heavy, stick to a pyro, stick to something that's gonna be able to do massive amounts of damage and that will benefit the most from being invulnerable and alive. Also, don't be afraid do not be afraid to break off and start defending yourself if you absolutely need to. Uh, granted, you don't have the, the best uh, weapons to use for an offensive. However, in most cases, if they kill your target, they're probably wounded already. Turn around and try to finish them off yourself or just run like a bitch. The engineer class is probably my least favorite of the bunch, and it, it's, it's totally me, right? Like, I mean, if you like to fortify yourself with a, a self-healing mechanism and a, an offensive turret, and just kind of sit there and just fight things off as they come along, or let the turret do all the work, then this class is totally for you. Uh, as you can see, I dropped a dispenser here, I'm getting into a fight, and if you notice here in a second, I'm gonna go ahead and start refilling my health. Uh, all happens automatically, just walk by it. Not only does it support me, it supports everybody else as well. 
Uh, one of the other items I did not give any, get any footage of is the teleport beacons that you have. There is an in and an out. You place them uh, at the beginning or wherever it's convenient, and then you place the other one uh, a little closer to where the battle is taking place. Here I've set up a turret in a pretty good spot, and you hear the, you're hear you going to hear the uh, turret going off here with tons of dings, and every ding is a hit, and this is an option you can turn on. I personally recommend it because I love hearing this sound. Because that means that my turret is kicking ass and I'm getting all the credit for it. <laughs> okay, so maybe not my least favorite. The Scout. This is something that I was drawn to because of the double jump feature, right? A true double jump will allow you to actually change directions in midair, and that's what they allow you to do here. Unfortunately, though, it comes with a huge drawback. You are about as delicate as a stale, dried-out toothpick. Seriously, it, you, you will not spend any time in front of the enemy at all because you will drop like you would not believe. However, being as agile as you are, you're able to quickly get around people, maneuver yourself, position yourself better, and put out as much DPS as possible until, of course, you are caught off guard by, I don't know, a minigun or, I don't know, somebody farting in the wrong direction. Shit, who knows? The Spy is another delicate class. However, you could do so much cool stuff with this guy. It's ridiculous. So here I am. I'm stealth, right? And I'm going to go in and throw on, just to disguise to see, I want to go ahead and be, um... This guy here. Okay, great. So now I look like, uh, I guess, a spy on the other team. Is that what I just did? <laughs> oh, no, a, a medic. That's right. I decided that I was going to go ahead and disguise myself as a medic because who doesn't want to have a medic following them around and stabbing them in the back? Kind of a cool thing to do as a spy. Definitely one of the perks. Uh, <laughs> stabbing people in the back. Um, here again, just I'm dressed as somebody else. Stab in the back. It breaks your uh, camouflage, your disguise, but you just go back into the corner and throw another one on. No big deal. The sniper class is probably my absolute, by far, favorite class in the game uh, whenever I want to not do anything but point and click. Uh, however, you are definitely primary target numero uno for any spy in the game because you're standing still. I mean, who better to stab in the back than somebody who's not moving at all? But you do have to have a lot of patience to play this class because you could sit there for a very long time and not see anybody. And then if you're not paying attention, another sniper is going to come around the corner and snipe you in the face. But overall, number one class for this guy. Pointing at myself. And the last class we'll talk about is the Pyro. Probably one of the more uh, destructive classes. Just mass mayhem. Just set things on fire. Run around. Finish them off. Their secondary attack, however, is probably one of the coolest I've seen in any game, period, right? Check this out. Airborne. This is not me, by the way. This is a YouTube video, but it was good enough to share. Honestly, look at this. That's right. Their secondary attack is an air gun that will push rockets and projectiles back as well as push people and put out fires. Kind of cool. As far as gameplay goes, they have tons of objective-based um, PvP. <laughs> it is technically PvP, so suck balls. Uh, they have Capture the Flag, they have uh, King of the Hill, they have Protect the Node, they have all of these various types of gameplay options that you've probably seen in other games. They also have a couple new ones I haven't seen anywhere else. The Parallel Payload Delivery one, where you're actually running right next to another team and you guys are just pushing your individual payloads towards the detonation points. Uh, that is also pretty awesome. There is no full-on deathmatch because that would make sense because it's all class-based, but there is team deathmatch available if you look for it uh, via Google search or maybe it's even in the server list, but I didn't see it in the noob-friendly gameplay selector. Okay, so the game has classes and it also has a backpack where you could store all of your items that you have. You can uh, trade with other players. No, nobody traded with me. Uh, I, I think it has something to do with me being on a free account. I'm not quite sure. Um, you can pick up loot. Ooh, check me out. I'm standing here, right? Adjusting my keybinds and jerk face here decides to go ahead and put something in my face. Thank you very much. I'm very happy about that. But. I did manage to get some fat loot out of this run. I don't know how it works, but according to Reddit, the quick and dirty summary given by Utter Pedant says you get random drops every 30 to 70 minutes while playing for approximately the first 11 hours each week. Play more than that and it will not get you any additional drops. Uh, it goes on to say if you play less than 11 hours, it rolls over to the next time you do play for a maximum of two weeks worth of drop time. Additionally, should an item drop but not show in the backpack, you can force it by opening and closing the store menu. You know what else they have? 
They have a crafting system. Oh man, this is crazy. So we have classes. We have a backpack. We have a trading system. We have a, me a mailbox, which I think only comes from Steam, but it's still a mailbox. Did I mention they have a crafting system? Uh, it's just ridiculous. I mean, here, I'm gonna take two items here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just mess it together, and I'm gonna build a scrap metal. I guess I guess I didn't really build anything. I just I just kind of took apart. But still, lots of things familiar to those of us who play MMOs, like a cash shop. Oh, everybody knows about the Manco. Uh, <laughs> so this thing is just jam packed with stuff. Some things are ranges from like 99 cents to 99 dollars for like the giant bundle packs. Lots of stuff here, and of course, this is why the game is free to play because they are being supported by the cash shop. And so, if you need something, go in here and get something. If you look at it, everything has stats. You're not just buying straight cosmetic stuff. You are actually buying items that have stats. And uh, I found that some of the items that I've looted, uh, for example, a shield that you probably saw earlier in the video, um, is actually sold in the store for uh, a good amount of change, like maybe two fifty or five bucks. Can't quite remember, but you can get these items in game if you're, you know, favored by the RNG gods. Last but not least is, of course, the movie making mode. Uh, if you guys saw whenever I died during this review, uh, which, of course, wasn't often, <laughs> uh, you can hit F6 and you'll save that previous life. So if you did some really awesome stuff during that, and you felt like, hey, you know, I'm going to make a cool video and post it on the YouTubes and show my moms and all that stuff. And you should be proud of me. Uh, you could do that using this movie editing suite. Uh, I don't really want to call it movie editing suite because it's not it's not anything like anything that you've used outside of a game. You can piece together a a full multi-camera type setup in the game because of course it's it's a game so you can move things around first person view third person point of view you could jump from character to character uh you could change your field of view you could change the angle there's all kinds of stuff check this out i'm gonna throw some music on this this was the first clip i showed you where i'm falling around n7 but done all up using the movie making mode All right, guys, so drawing a couple conclusions here, right? You kind of sounds a lot like uh, an MMO, okay? The only thing it's missing is an actual lobby. But if you count Steam as a lobby, because Steam does have its own chat type system, you can create groups. It may not be massive or general, right, in that sense. But take that part out of the equation. This has pretty much everything that other MMOs have, like World of Tanks, which some people are also reluctant to call an MMO, but it definitely promotes itself as such. So I'm curious what you guys think. How close are we to completely blurring the line on what an MMO is? Like just all games are going to eventually not only lose the online part, right? Like um, Mega Man Online, right? It's, it's just gonna say Mega Man and we're just going to assume that it's online. Of course, Mega Man Online would be amazing. Uh, the platformer version, not like the weird 3D thing they came out with for like a while, that was terrible. Anyways, let me know in the comments below or AK Mike B on Twitter and Facebook and next week, I will probably be going to Sony Online Entertainment Fanfare. I'm not quite sure just yet. If it happens, might not be a BFF report, but there will be some stuff going on there, video related, more than likely on Thursday. So I will see you guys later. Bye.